Hello, my soccer universe. What a week it was for Manchester United. Um, it's gonna be an interesting video because um, we have to talk about the FA Cup, we have to talk about the really stretched out round of the Premier League. But to be honest, I have not seen much live. I saw, I think, highlights of all the games. But you know, uh, might be a little bit hard <laughs> in my memory because it's an uh, entire week. But I would say let's start with Manchester United in the FA Cup. And yeah, it was all the FA Cup ties were not great games. I think I saw the uh, Norwich Manchester United, I saw a little bit of the second half, and yeah, it didn't look great. But um, Manchester United does get the result. Uh, definitely helped that Norwich was down to 10 men and just hoping, really hoping to get an e equalizer. But Igalo gives United the lead. And Cantwell, with a nice uh, effort, uh, makes it 1-1. Uh, and then um, a red card that, yeah, you got a last man. I know it was not that bad, I better foul it, but it's last, last man. So, got to give it. And then uh, Norwich really tried to hold on for a penalty shoe shoot with Tim Krul. Uh, actually hoping to be the hero as he was already against Spurs, but um, there was someone called Harry Maguire who had something against it and in the 118th rather scrappy goal, but overall I think deserve it. Uh, I guess he's united through. Sheffield and Arsenal also saw about the last half hour. Uh, I actually have to say I was surprised when Arsenal uh, that Arsenal was already up because up, up until the point Arsenal was everything but great, but yeah, Sheffield United had a goal disallowed for offside. Well, if it's offside, it's the right call. Uh, penalty given then to Pepe, uh, who makes it 1 0. And Arsenal actually looked all rightish. I didn't see much kind of, uh, from uh, Sheffield United. In the last 10 minutes, you saw that they were getting a little bit desperate. And then McGoldrick gets the goal for, for them. I thought, yeah, here we go. Overtime, and I actually would have, would have time to watch over. I was really look, looking forward to, but then Dani Ceballos uh, with a rather strange goal. I mean, suddenly he was, um, I think he was running all, all the way. It was rebound, took the ball, and yeah, the keeper is coming out and leaving the corner a little bit open and makes it 2 1 for Arsenal, um, who surprisingly move on. Um, Leicester City against Chelsea was also a tough first half with uh, having a little bit more um, advantage to Leicester who since the restart really do not look good uh, but seemingly um, Lambert had some choice words to his players and Chelsea came out a little bit better and in the end William Barkley gets the winning goal for them and then the game that I don't know if I should call that I was looking forward to it because I knew how it will go and it went more or less that uh, that way that Manchester City will dominate possession and Newcastle need to convert their chances. Then um, a rather unnecessary penalty um, that De Bruyne com converts in the 37th and that basically was it. Manchester City having a possession for possession's sake but not really um, that many great chances. But you gotta take take your chances and that's exactly uh, Gale a wide open net in the I think 65th 66th minute where he just has to convert and get get because and they're promptly punished because Raheem Sterling two minutes later makes it 2 0 and that was the game done and dusted. That sets up the following semi finals, which I find rather intriguing. It's both London against Manchester, uh, so we can have a London final, we can have a Manchester final, or we can ha have a mixed final. We have Arsenal against City, which uh, I think only a fool would think that um, this is going to be a tight game. Although maybe, maybe, just maybe, Arsenal uh, might pull out a performance. And then United against Chelsea, which I find rather intriguing. Um, I think both Manchester teams should be favored in that one, especially since United, although they don't necessarily have been the better team, beat already uh, Chelsea twice. So kind of interesting um, uh, setup I have to say in the FA Cup. Let's look at the Premier League where uh, at the same time and I really hate it, I actually think and probably there's tradition uh, not not referring to it, I really think that they should say league is on the weekend and the cup competition is during the week 
um, you know, midweek action. It kind of, I don't like this, you know, that we have now such a stretched out round. I, as I said, I saw mostly highlights. Uh, Wolves got a rather efficient win over Aston Villa. Uh, it seemed like a derby overall, but you know, Wolves get the win. Uh, Southampton had no trouble disposing Watford uh, with uh, Danny Ings scoring two goals to make it 2-0. Uh, um, there was an own goal, but uh, Ward Prowse makes it 3-1. Burnley gets, uh, in a rather even contest, gets a 1-0 win over Crystal Palace and United. Yes, it is only Brighton, but United really had a great showing there um, with uh, Bruno Fernandes really making the uh, the difference, scoring two goals, one of an uh, assist by Pogba. Uh, Greenwood already gave them uh, the one nil lead. United looks impressive, and as as we see, they are keep rising in the table, and they are definitely held by other results. Um, I don't want to say impressive, but Arsenal gets a 4 0 win over Norwich. And I have to say, Norwich, they are really good to watch. It's just, um, they're a little bit, how to say, it's just their open style is seemingly not made for the Premier League, or they don't have the necessary grit over, over, over there. But they're a really nice team to watch. Actually, every time I watch Norwich, uh, it's a joy to watch, and, you know, also helped by their unique jersey setup. Uh, Bournemouth lo uh, loses at home to Newcastle United. Uh, from an Austrian perspective, uh, Valentino Lazaro makes his first goal, but I was more shocked that they're playing there in orange. Uh, together with these new Bournemouth kits, uh, you know, not red and black stripes, but you know, everything patchwork. Ugh. I don't know, uh, but you know, it was not uh, Lazaro who was the, the star of the show. It was actually Dwayne Gale who made the goal that he didn't make against um, City. Uh, Longstaff and Almiron get uh, the first goal. It was 4 0, and only a very late uh, Bournemouth gets a goal back. Everton gets the win over Leicester, and as I said, Leicester is in really bad shape. Um, Richard Lisson and Sigurdsson, uh, after 60 minutes, it was a done deal, more, more or less. Although Iheanacho pulls one back, they just cannot get back. Um, and I'm afraid that Leicester might drop out of the Champions League spots, that they looked so secure in. I really would have hoped that they make it in the Champions League. And even with uh, City probably not being allowed to play in the Champions League, I think it will be a tough, tough call. But um, they're at least helped by one result, that Chelsea completely forgot about defending. And I don't know what happened. I really don't, don't, don't know. Uh, West Ham had already a goal dis disallowed from Suchek. Then a penalty is given to uh, Chelsea that Villian converts. And you really think... Yeah, that's going, that's going to be it. But uh, right before halftime, Suchek gets the equalizer then, make up the goal. And Antonio makes it 2-1. Wonderful free kick by Villian. And I saw the kind of the last few minutes a little bit. Uh, and I thought that Chelsea is pushing. Uh, oh, no, they were pushing then for, for, for the win, but completely exposing them on uh, the defensive side where, yeah, they didn't have the best uh, day marking and being uh, right there. And Yarmolenko, who, who, who came on uh, during that game, then in the 89th, gets the winner. A winner that I really did not expect. Did not see, I just heard Sheffield United against Spurs. The Spurs were terrible to watch, but they would have gotten an equalizer that was kind of contentiously ruled out. And I saw the first half of City against Liverpool, where Liverpool, I think, for 15 minutes was kind of in their guard of honor, of course, which was rather um, anticlimactic with all the spacing and whatever. And you could see... That the city players, um, yeah, yeah, we're giving you the guard, 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 guard but that's uh, but they the guard of honor soon broke up. So yeah, um, I was expecting more from that game. I'm honest, but I understand for Liverpool there's not much to play for, and it was a little bit unlucky this penalty call. Although I understand why it was given. Uh, so De Bruyne uh, on Sterling, De Bruyne that makes it um, one nil. Salah before had already uh, hit the Woodwork and I thought that Liverpool had a, was a little bit more um, dangerous. But then Sterling after Foden um, assist makes it 2-0 and Foden himself 3-0. It was kind of, yeah, from where was this coming? And then add to it a 
on goal by Oxlade Chamberlain and there's a 4-0 win. That probably will sting a little bit and maybe this will inspire Liverpool to play out the season nicely. On the other side, they have nothing to prove to anyone anymore. Um, I know it would be nice to break some records or whatever, but um, I also understand you don't want to get you don't want to get injured, you want to preserve yourself. So I, I don't hold it much against them. So let's look at the standings uh, as they are. You know, Liverpool are through. Manchester City will not go anywhere, but they can win still two trophies, namely the Champions League and the FA Cup. Uh, and then Leicester still holding on to third spot. But as you can see, Leicester, Chelsea, United, Wolves are uh, within three points and I still think a Chelsea will go in but I think United has a very good shot of making it a third place finish. I have to say United really really improved uh, and I think they might be able to at least make a challenge like Spurs did last season towards the top two. I think the top two are still a level above them but United actually seems to be the third best team at the moment. Uh, then for the Europa League spots, United Arsenal is ahead of Spurs, Burnley, maybe Everton. I think there's a chance it's also a rel rel relatively tight race. Uh, we have to see about Crystal Palace uh, and Newcastle, whether they can uh, get in there. Uh, and looking at relegation, <sighs> Watford is endangered, I have to say. Uh, but I don't see Bournemouth really getting out, out of there and I don't know about Villa. Uh, they seemingly have a tough program so it might just be enough and the win for West Ham was really a crucial one for them as well. So that's my few cents on the happenings in England. I will do Serie A in the evening, you will get it tomorrow and I decided to do all the Austria-Germany stuff after the uh, weekend because it makes kind of sense to have it in all because Austrian league is more or less wrapped, wrapped up and the German uh, everything is there wrapped up as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!